Right, you've joined me today on the Air and Collar Canal at Pollington. Now, I'm quite looking forward to this. I've been told on good authority, this is a brilliant area. It looks so fishing, to be honest with you, I just can't wait to get fishing. Now, we're gonna be targeting roach, skimmers, perch, everything really. And whilst I've been setting up, I've actually seen a couple of decent bream roll. So it looks really, really fishy. It's quite a deep part of the canal. It's a top four and a half deep, 11, 12 foot deep. So today I'm going to be using a, a mix, a, a concoction of a mix really, that I've used on many waters. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the mix I'm actually going to be using and the baits that I'm going to be feeding as well. We're going to do that throughout the progression of the, of, of the video. So let's talk about the ground bait first. Now to me this is really important. I've got some products here that I have relied upon when it comes to my natural fishing for many years in the UK and abroad as well. So first of all, we've got a trusty dynamite rich brown crumb. Of course, when you're skimmer fishing on natural waters, cereal brown crumb is really imperative to use in your mix. Bream, Silver X Bream. Now, to be honest with you, I've used this longer than any other of the products from the Silver X range. I just love it. It's really fine. Fish love it, especially Bream, and that's why it's Silver X Bream. Um, I just think it mixes up nice. I think the particles in it, the fish love, and you, when you catch the fish, you actually, a lot of the time, the roach and the small skimmers are bringing up the products, the particles from this particular mix. So it shows that it's not just an attractor, it's an actual source of food for the fish as well. A, a good holding food for the fish, keeps them in your peg feeding longer. Right, now onto this now, the river. Now, don't let the name fool you. The reason why I love using this, it's very dense. It's a, it's a body for a mix. So, for example, in, on this particular peg here, it's quite deep. I want a bit of weight to my mix. I want some density. So when I'm feeding, whether it's a ball of ground bait via a cup or a little nugget, I'm ensuring that that mix is getting down. And that is where the river comes into it. So if you're on deep venues, whether they're flowing or not, the river plays a big part in my armory when it comes to mixing my ground bait. That's really important. And then last but not least, black swim stim. Now, as we all know, natural venues now are so getting used to fish meal mixers. So we're on a venue where hopefully I want to target some skimmers or some better skimmers. So I want to turn it into a kind of like a mild fish meal mix. We've got cereal, we've got all the ingredients we use on natural waters, and then we're going to mix some black swim stim. And also what that is going to do, it's going to darken the mix. The water's reasonably clear. I want to darken that mix off so the fish feel safe to feed over. So let me show you how to mix it all up. Really, really simple. I'm going to add a full bag of black swim stim. Now, I'm going to be using quite a bit of ground bait today. Because it's so deep, I'm going to have to keep forcing those fish to follow that bait down onto the bottom. So I am reckon I'll be mixing about three kilo and that should last me for the day. Some river, half a bag of river, because as I've said, it's a very, very dense mix. I don't want to make it too claggy. I just want to add a bit of weight to a mix. So half a bag of river, half a bag of bream, like that, and half a bag of trusty old brown crumb. Now, when it comes to this style of fishing, if I was in a match and I knew I'd be on this particular length in a match, I'd always want to mix up my ground bait before I get to my peg, simply because I want an inert mix. I want those particles to remain in the bottom third of the water column, which is going to force fish to stay near the bottom to feed. But of course, I want, I'm on the bank. I want to show you how to mix it up properly. You've got to give these particles time to settle and absorb that moisture. So that's why I'm just doing it on the bank just to show you. But generally, if you can, mix it before you get on the bank, especially in large amounts like what I'm doing today. And to speed up the process, I brought along a whisk. Now, it's something I don't really prefer to use on commercials, but when natural waters, as I said, this amount of ground bait, it just makes you mix so much better. So give it, mix it all the dry products together first of all. Like so. And then what we're going to do is add a little bit of ground bait, bit at a time, 
uh, sorry, water. So a decent helping of water. And of course, what I want to do, the same principle what I do with all my mixers, I want to over-wet it, because of course, by the time you're getting everything ready, it's giving that ground bait a time to absorb all that moisture and it will dry out a little bit. It's speeding up that process. Yeah. You can see it already turning into quite a nice dark mix and it'll darken off even more as well. More water. Right, so that's more or less finished. As you can see now, I've turned it into quite a claggy mix. Loads of particles in there, but it's quite a fine mix at the same time. So they're going to be preoccupied with the baits we're going to be feeding within the ground bait. Yet at the same time, it smells absolutely gorgeous and a slight hint of fish meal, which is what I'm trying to achieve. Right, let's talk about the particle baits now. I'm going to leave that for two or three minutes, let it settle and then I'm gonna riddle it, and then that's it, straightforward. Riddle it, and it's all ready to use. It allows me to do a nice little ball like that, feeding by hand. It allows me, that texture allows me to do whatever I want with that mix to manage it how I want it to work. So that's the ground bait. Particle baits, we're gonna be using worms, casters, and maggots. Quite simple, as I said, Using a fine mix means that the fish are preoccupied with the particles that we're going to be using in the mix. So throughout the video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to be chopping up the worms, how big the worms that I want them chopping up, what maggots, what hook baits, how I'm going to feed my peg throughout the progression when I get a feel for how the peg needs to be fed. So that's it. Let me riddle the ground bait and time to get fishing, I think. Right, so it's time to feed the peg now. Initially, I just want to put four or five balls out. Might put actually six out. Might be feeling, thinking we're going to catch a few fish today. Um, with loads of particle baits in there to get the fish down feeding. And then it's a case of you can't rely upon that for long because it's so deep. Those fish will be in the middle of summer now. Really warm weather at the moment. It's 12 foot deep. Those fish are half depth and above but we want to get them down near the deck. So I'm constantly going to have to feed all the time. So to start with, we're going to feed, as I've said, let's say six balls. So what I do is put six balls into my tray of ground bait, kind of like four them into the size that I'm going to be feeding them via the cup. All right, so six balls. And the most we obviously once we add the particles to this particular mix, there's mostly going to be um, maybe a ball left, obviously, because the particles are going to bulk it out. Now, as you can see, I've done it quite damp. The reason is because I want to form those balls. I've, I want those particles to absorb the moisture. So I've left the ground bait as long as possible. That means all those particles are going to eventually go down. They're not going to be floating mid-depth and bringing fish up. I want, them to, I want the, the ground bait principle of putting particles in and doing nice kind of like soft, damp ground bait to ensure that those those fish are going down F uh, the fish are following the bait down so there we go that's ready that's the ground bait now we've got some chopped worm here i've chopped it reasonably fine not too fine because i want to attract the decent fish in this area it's just a it looks so fishy i want to catch some bream today so a good helping of worm to begin with and as you can see when we're like we've just put some in the water actually it's amazing, just a pinch of worm chopped up. There's so much bait there. Uh, so the, the fish will be rummaging around in that ground bait for quite a long period of time. Let's mix that in. Like so. Some casters. Just drain off some of the water because I don't want to dampen off the ground bait any more than it already is. Pinch full of casters. Right, so, a good handful of dead maggot. When it comes to skimmers, you cannot beat dead maggot. 
So there we go. Mix it all together. So in the, in these bowls now we have got it's filled with food for the fish. So I'm now gonna make my balls. Now I've plummeted up, it's a really level bottom. So that's perfect for this kind of situation. It allows me to work my rig in whatever direction the water movement's going and know that I'm in the same depth and I'm gonna spread that bait about a little bit. I'm not gonna feed it bang on top of each other because I want to attract a decent, a decent amount of fish into my area. So I want a reasonable large holding area for the fish to feel safe and feed confidently. So four balls. Five balls, and I'll do the last one when I need to. So as you can see there, look at that, absolutely rammed with food for the fish. So let's feed the peg and get fishing. Now I've plummeted up, as I've said, it's a level bottom. So I'm only fishing six meters out, simply because it's deep, it's level, there shouldn't be any need to really fish any further out than that. through the session I'm catching a load of fish small fish I've had a couple of bream and I'm just playing another bream but I don't think it's up properly to be honest with you now it's quite interesting this it's took a while for him to come but not forgetting it's like 12 foot deep so I'm having to feed on a regular basis I've had quite a bit of worm already introducing small balls over the top of my float which has worked quite well and then I've just gone for it. I've started cupping in the odd big pot of chopped worm, just enough ground bait to bind the worm together to get it down. Uh, and as soon as I've done that, I've had an arrival of bream. Well, you know, I've had a couple of bream straight away. It's made an instant difference. So it seems to be working quite well. Just feeding a little nugget like that, like so, throwing it over my over my pole line. It's finally coming up. They don't half fight these wild bream. Really do put up a good scrap. As I say, I'm not sure whether it's foul looked or not, to be honest with you. I've not felt it nod yet. We've had a lovely hybrid, but we're catching these gusters all the time, odd perch. And as I say, you can just tell the pegs are getting stronger and stronger. Not as many bites now, but better quality fish. And to be honest with you, it's just a fantastic day's fishing and it's just nice for a change. And as you can see, this little beauty doesn't want to give in. That's still hugging the bottom. 
I'm fishing, as I say, 12 foot deep, and bizarre as it sounds, I'm only six meters out. I've got the same depth next to my nets as I have. Oh yeah, it is, it's foul hooked. It's a nice bream though. There you go. There we go, in the bag. They all count. Look at that beauty. Right in the side fin. Lovely fish. Take the hook out. Slip him in the net. Catch it. I've caught a lot of my fish on worms today. Half a worm, bits of worm. I've had the occasional fish on caster. Um, but definitely worms. The, uh, the bait that seems to be standing out for the better fish. So all I'm doing is just getting a bit of a dendrobina. Just a section really. A nice section of worm like that. Nice and wriggly. What fish can't resist that? The beauty about this depth is it allows me to swing my rig out, ship up the extra section, and place the rig over where my Olivet's just landed. So it works out that I'm actually, makes your fishing more efficient, especially in a match where you're trying to catch a lot quicker. And then holding the rig still and just following it down. And there we go, Ooh, just pulled out of it. I think. We're going to end up catching a few skimmers here. Again, just flicking the rig out, shipping out to the six metre line, holding the rig, waiting for it to completely straighten up. The fish are like following that bait down, so I'm just tantalising them by holding that bait maybe a foot and a half off the bottom and then slowly lowering it down. And that's generally when you get a bite. Once that rig's settled, and they watch that bait follow down, they go down to the bottom and they intercept it. It's not always the case that they're on the bottom grubbing about. They're still cruising about just off the bottom and taking bait that's passing them. And that's why it's quite important just to keep that bait going in. Little guster. Nothing better than catching a lovely net of silvers on a summer's day on a beautiful stretch of canal like this. got two rigs up today. Well, I've actually got three rigs up. I've got a gram and a quarter, a gram and a half, and a two gram. And once the fish arrive, the gram and a half is by far the best rig. If I was catching more bream and I knew that they were there and settled on my bait, I'm sure that the two gram would come into play. Just because it works quicker through the water, more stability, and helps you read the positive bites that you get from the bream when they're feeding on the bottom. But because I'm catching a bit of everything, just that little bit lighter rig, that gram and half rig seems to be working a lot better. As you can see, all I'm doing is I'm just holding it against the flow. Got a slight bit of movement, and that is dictated by the locks being open and not. But I've got a slight bit of water movement. I'm just holding that float against the flow rather than running it through. go through the same process again if I haven't had a bite. 
holding the rig up, lowering it down. When you come to venues like this, open water, wild venues, deep waters as well, more to the point, it's very important to be positive, especially when you're targeting bonus fish in the canal, um, like skimmers. It's going to take time, especially where concern like here, where it's 12 foot deep, it's going to take time for them to settle over your bait. And when I started this morning, the first hour and a quarter was all right, caught a few fish, but it took quite a while for them to find the bait and constant feeding as well. And just on that verge where I'm thinking, well, it's very slow, this is, nothing's happening. Just like the flick of a switch, I started getting indications that the fish were finally settling on my bait and responding to my feeding. So it's very important just to keep going and keep that bait going in because you need to give fish bream time to settle on your bait and feed confidently and eventually you'll get rewarded for it. So today for example I brought like what I said this morning I brought a choice selection of baits I brought I brought casters worms and maggots and initially worm was definitely the best bait and then like the flick of a switch although I'm still feeding worm I couldn't catch on the worm and I've had this many times before. I had it at Porth Reservoir in the uh, Guru Festival where I was feeding a lot of worm but I couldn't get a bite on the worm and I actually caught on the maggot and it's exactly the same as happened today where double maggot and single maggot has worked better than a little bit of worm. Now this is where a lot of people might make a mistake thinking that they don't want the worm so they'll stop feeding the worm worm will always bring fish into your peg settle them make them feed confidently so even if you're not catching on the worm still feed the worm especially during the summer months when the water's a bit more colored than what it is in the winter you've got an added scent that's what homes the fish in and experiment with your hook baits and don't just sit there with one particular bait if all of a sudden you stop catching like what now i am i'm fishing double maggot although i've just topped it up my line's gone a little bit quiet. Experiment, and eventually you'll find a bait, whether it's castor, worm, maggot, sweet corn, that the fish like at that particular time. And you have to keep adjusting. So remember that when you go to these venues, that one particular bait won't always work. Bring a choice, and you've got the option then of swapping and changing to how the swim changes in its moves throughout the day. See, at the moment, now that I know that it's coming to later on in the afternoon, I've fed quite a lot of bait, I'm getting less fish, but the fish are worth catching. So I'm sitting it out with double maggot, treble maggot, trying to catch them better fish, because I'd rather wait for that float to go under with a two or, two or a three pound bream than catch little fish once I know that that peg's working. So obviously give yourself that option of targeting those fish when they arrive. Bigger hook, more selective baits for them to pick out. Right, there we have it. After a, a fantastic day's fishing, we fished for three and a half hours, and I've had over 45 pound of bream, gusters, roach, perch. What a fantastic net of fish, really enjoyed it. 
and really a quite a simple approach. So during the summer months, get yourself on canals like this and hopefully with the tips that I've given you today, you'll have a lovely day's fishing like what I've experienced today. So until later, tight lines. Thank you.